What's going on, y'all? So, so we are back again for another episode review of Star Baby. Baby, listen, listen. <laughs> Brandy. <laughs> Stick to motherfucking acting, bitch, because you are killing this fucking role, ho. And um, I like the bitch, and I can't stand the bitch on this on on, on this fucking show. See that, and you know you got a good character when you can't stand they ass, and you like them at the same damn time, bitch. Okay, because she is killing that shit. I meant to put in there last week. Them clothes, whoever is doing the outfitting for, or I should say the styling or whatever for Brandy, I am loving the natural hair and I am loving the colors that they are putting on her skin because last week her in that yellow and in that white, bitch, that was fucking everything. I had to go off for it, you know, and I don't even do that shit, but whatever. Bitch. So we start this episode off, what is called, A Family Affair, Season 3, Episode 3. Um, and basically, you got Carlotta talking to this interview or whatever. Basically, it seemed like they was doing a day in the life type of shit, okay? And she was just giving her, propping herself up about the deals that she been making, how she gonna turn Gravity Records around. You know, she's the head of everything and all this shit. And come to find out, Mateo knows the girl who's interviewing her because they went to school together. And, you know, they go back to his back office. They talk and he like, why don't you talk to me and all this stuff? Who would have thought somebody like me from Cuba would get into Duke and fail a couple of times and then come through and be the head of this whole shit or whatever. So apparently he doing all this stuff like he got to impress her. Because as we saw later on in the episodes, you know, they was flirting around. Simone just saw it. Simone then told the wife and... The wife is like, why are you still trying to impress these people? Who gives a fuck? And Simone was looking at them like, so this what y'all got going on? I just told you that she was out here and with your man and they flirting and shit. And you just like, what the fuck ever? Okay. I said, girl, you woke up in her bed. You should have known too. <laughs> Come on. Okay. None of y'all squeaky clean up in this bitch. But um, you got Brandy, bitch. Brandy is getting it in with this white boy. I said, who the fuck is that? Who? I said, girl, it's on the tip of my goddamn tongue. Who is he? Chad Michael Murray. I said, bitch, I ain't seen you since One Tree Hill. What the fuck you been at? Okay. Um, you know, and apparently his name is Xander in this episode. And Xander is going to come through and going to try to do some shit, okay? Brandy, you getting played like a motherfucker. See, you trying to be Carlotta. And Carlotta called her ass out on this shit at the end of the episode, right? And, um, you know, it kind of makes sense. It's a competition. It's always a competition in family sometimes. Even when it's not, it is, okay? And, you know, with these two girls... They just, it's a competition, okay? They don't like each other at this moment and probably never really liked each other since they was kids. And so, therefore, you know, you got this tension that's building up. And you have Brandy, who is the head of Karma Nightclub, um, which is the place where Carlotta was saying in her interview that she signed this contract with so that her artists from Gravity Records would go over there each week and perform. And it's a multi-gear or whatever contract. And she had no idea that, um, her sister was the head of, okay? And so, she can't breach the contract. When she found that out, she was like, who the fuck running you the money, okay? It gotta be Xander, huh? That's who doing it. Man, when Brandy and Xander was about to get it in, and he choked her ass a little bit. Like, bitch, I'm into a lot of stuff. So, look. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> she was into it, too. I said, girl, let him squeeze it just a little bit tighter and then release that shit. Okay, stop it, Ashley. Stop it, Ashley. You know, um, we're not finna do this. Not now. Okay? I'm just saying. He said, and she said, bitch. And I said, let him do it. <laughs> girl. But anyway, you know, he basically is fronting her the money. And we see this thing where Carlotta go meet up with him and was like, um, what you going to have her do? Okay. What you about to do with her? All right. Cause I know you ain't doing this for free. And basically she said, if I find out that you doing some dirty shit, I'm going to call the cops on your ass myself because apparently he's in some fucked up shit as well. And we saw what he's into. Well, we don't know exactly what he's into, but we saw that he's a bad guy. And Brandy's character, I should say Cassie, she's trying to, you know, leave her past in the past. 
for the moment, okay? She's slowly working her way to that. One of the last tied up, last ends of her um, street life or, you know, crime life is getting to Andy, okay? And once she does that, does that. Once she does that, she's all to the good. And so what we wind up seeing is uh, Maurice going over there talking to Noah again, trying to um, sway him to go over there to his management company, to the independent side, and, you know, trying to give him all the hype of what it's about. And then, of course, Carlotta is right there. And, of course, um, you know, he says, baby, it ain't going to happen. I'm team Carlotta all the way to forever in a day, okay? And Carlotta, you know, she feel a little bit vindicated, but, you know, um, you have Noah's daddy who's also in the picture and he's also in his ear. Even if he's not really trying to tell him what to do, he's trying to tell him, remember what I told you, okay? This ain't the Noah Brooks that I know, okay? I thought you was the one that was all about freedom or whatever because he heard that, you know, he's going to stay with Gravity Records and he's looking at his contract and stuff, you know? And um, he was just, when, <laughs> when Noah called him, he was like, with your gay ass or some shit like that, I said, no, you better calm the fuck down, okay? Because... Not only is your audience women, but it's gay men. So calm the fuck down. But that was, I mean, it made me chuckle. So whatever. Um, You know, he was looking at his contract and he was like, how come you haven't signed the contract? Because you know that if you do this movie thing and all this other stuff, it's going to pull you away from your music. Okay. And that's not what you're about. You're about freedom. You want that independence. Okay. So you have to think about, it is a bump in the middle. You have to think about what it is that you really want. And, um, you know, they had this moment where Mateo, he got word because, um, I guess what's her name, told him that Noah is, you know, not happy about the contract. And, you know, he pulls up to his house in a new car and gave it to him and gave him a new contract or whatever. And basically was trying to persuade him and using this as a bribe to get him to stay. Oh, you got me a new car, whatever. Bitch, I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to pay for that car at the end of the day, okay? Go back, watch TLC, okay? Nothing is given for free, all right? That probably came out his goddamn budget. And he looking at the contract and he was like, hold up. First of all, Carlotta said, had already negotiated in my contract, my previous contract, that, um... I'll be able to, you know, have creative freedom and whatever on my third album. And he was like, after you do this album, we'll talk about it. I said, bitch, what? All right. And she was pissed off about it. He pissed off about it. The daddy not there for it. And then you get the scene with Noah and his daddy sitting there. You see the daddy playing um, uh, one of the Temptation songs. And then, um, <clears throat> you know, they go into a conversation. At first, it started off good. And then it started off with... Um, the daddy saying that he's about to go, uh, he found a place. He just needs some money. So he, he didn't ask him for money, but he did it in a roundabout way by saying, I just got to find out, I found a way of paying for it. Okay. Now either he could have been asking for money or he probably just really meant that he got to find a way to pay for it. And he was like, Oh, so that's what you here for. That's what you here for. So you leave and you want me to come back and benefit and pay your ass, bitch. What you want? You want a, 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 a hundred? 200 how about just a thousand or whatever and he threw that money at him and oh boy he threw it back like bitch don't you be disrespectful as fuck like that i said well shit you know he said get the fuck up out of my house all <laughs> right um so it comes to the day where it's supposed to you know they supposed to do the opening of the club or whatever and he gets up there before he goes up there, the dad comes backstage and, you know, he was talking to him, apologizing in his own way and then was explaining how he got into the situation that he got into. He said he saw him, you know, um, sing that song, Dance With My Father, when they was down in New Orleans for Pride or whatever. They made it on YouTube and all that. Seen him play that and he was sitting there with Paul and Paul apparently was his partner, his, his boyfriend or whatever, his lover. And, um... Paul died and because I guess they they had to not been married or whatever because he had no rights to anything and that's why he was out in the streets living in his car and so from that Noah kind of softened up and realized that he really wasn't there trying to take advantage of him he just literally fell on his luck real quick out of nowhere 
And he said he made a promise to Paul because when they was listening to the um song that he was singing in New Orleans, um, Death with My Father, when he was singing it, um, he made a promise pro to Paul that he was going to reach out to him and make things right with him, okay? And that was basically probably the last promise that he made to him before he died, and that's what he wanted to honor that. It's unfortunate that it took that long for him and took something like that and somebody else to tell you that you need to reach out to your child, but at least he did. And at that moment, I didn't think that, you know, um, he had any ill intent. He really was trying to be there for his son, and he was just telling him, the one thing that I always told you is you already a star. You already got your music and know what you're about, but what it's about really is freedom, okay? So you need to go and get your freedom, all right? And this plays a big part in what winds up happening later on in the show. After he performs or whatever, he gets up there and do um, the Temptations, Papa Was a Rolling Stone. And his daddy was just so gleeful and so happy. And that, that was a cute little moment right then and there. Um, we got this part with... <laughs> okay. They doing this whole thing. All right. And... Take three was supposed to perform. They don't perform. Star had a moment. If she don't, we'll get in there in a second. But what wind up happening is Noah went over there to Carlotta and said, bitch, listen, this ain't going to happen. Um, I need to go to um, Cassie stuff. So, of course, Cassie going to throw it up in her face. Carlotta get pissed off. They start to fucking fight. Okay, mind you, they got in an argument already. And we kind of knew this shit was going to happen because it's been building and it's been building. It was Jaden's birthday. Okay, Jalen, Jaden, whatever his name is. And Cassie turned up at this hair salon over there at Carlotta's place. Okay. And, you know, bringing a little birthday present and all this stuff. And, of course, they get into it about her being in the um, business. And she don't know what the fuck she doing. And she just trying to be like her in high heel. And you would never have what I have. And you just a bottom feeder and all this shit. And I said, oh, y'all are just trash in front of company. Girl, okay, you know, do what you got to do. And so this is putting more fire under Cassie. Like, bitch, I got to prove her wrong. And that's exactly what wound up happening. And it just seems like at this point, Carlotta is about to start losing a lot of stuff. You done lost Noah. You done lost um, the main position that you had at Midtown. You lost Midtown Sound. Now it's Gravity Records. Now you got to fight for the position that you have and to stay in that position. Then you lose the main, main artist that's on there that everybody wants and now you know you got to compete with your sister who took the artist that you want they just get into a fucking fight and it just seems like you know she got so many deals in her hands and so many pots and she's trying to prove that she can make it all work and it's all coming down to the wire and she's gonna stress herself the fuck out trying to prove to Mateo that you know I deserve to be here and what I've been saying I can put action behind it and make it come true girl it was just a lie you know huh and Cassie get into a fight Bitch, she yanked that wig off. I said, Cassie, that's about the best thing that you could have did with Carlotta. <laughs> I don't understand. What I truly don't understand is how they get Cassie look right. They get Cotton's look right. Hell, they even get Bruce. Uh, uh, I keep calling him Bruce. Miss Lawrence look right. Well, that is his name in the show. Bruce look right. Okay. But they can never really get Carlotta look right. 95% of the time, okay? Now, when she did that interview at the beginning of the episode with that hair and outfit, bomb. She looked cute. This outfit that she had on and that um fucking, um, fucking bowl cup ass fucking wig, bitch, bob wig that she had at the club, no, okay? I would have yanked that shit off too, you know? I just don't understand it. Then you got her pacing in the back room looking like Cleo, okay, with her braids and shit, like she ready to get that sew in and, um... With her little wife beater on. I said, Cleo finna come out? Cleo was about to come out for a second. Cotton came up and there was like, Mom, what's going on? You need to talk to me. Tell me what's going on between Auntie Cassie. Cassie ain't who the fuck you think she is. Well, tell me who she is, okay? And she was going to. But she did not want to hurt her daughter. And she just said, fuck this shit. Let's just go home. I said, girl, you good. Because I would have said, that scandalous ass bitch killed your dad. Okay, that's what the fuck is going on. But then she would have been pissed off because you knew this whole time that she killed my daddy and you see me up here trying to figure out who killed my daddy. Either way, people going to be pissed, okay? But um, moving on from that storyline, 
what else was happening? Derek was talking to his grandmother. She hears some um, kids out there playing in the yard or whatever, and it startles her. And he was asking her some more information about the man. Do she know? And he said, she said he had a brand, like a BC brand on his arm or whatever. And I said, bitch, for real? So he goes to the little um, karma opening thing, and he's over there talking to um, Alex or whatever. And next thing you know, he see a dude in the audience who had a BC brand branded on his arm. And I said, uh-oh. I said, that ain't him, though. That ain't him. I remember how he looked. But later on in the episode, um... We see Chad Michael Morey bring his ass back and going to tell Brandy, listen, I know, you know, I'm so glad that you're doing what you're doing, but um, I need you to do me a favor. This one favor and then you're done. And she was like, what? I need to run some money through the club. She was like, I told you that I'm stopped. He was like, no, after this favor, then you'll be good. I said, no, it's not. They keep on asking for a favor after favor after favor. Brandy, you ain't never getting out, okay? And Carlotta was motherfucking right. That man is using you, okay? He don't give a shit. Okay, you're gullible as hell for some white dick. I'm sorry, but that's just what it is. Okay, and um, all of a sudden, this dude brings in Andy. Okay, they done found Andy's ass. Mind you, Carlotta done gave him some more money or whatever, told him to get the fuck up out of here. He didn't want to go see his parents because he couldn't stay away, but he still had to go see him. And, um, you know, she's talking to High Hill, the ghost of High Hill, and he was like, you still ain't let him off the hook for my death. She was like, I'm trying to let the motherfucker get up out of here. That's the best I can do. Okay, but this little bitch don't want to get up out of there, so he got himself caught. And the dude that brought him in was a new hire working muscle for um Cassie, okay? And he also had a BC on his arm. That's him. I think that was the one who raped um uh, um Grandma Ruby. I said, bitch, bitch, because I remember the hair. It was the hair. And I said, ain't that about a bitch? Okay, so we move on from that one. Then we, let me just, this whole shit was star. Star and the baby and everybody's doing all good and she wants to have a family and, you know, everybody to be on the same page and she even want to reach out to Brody. I said, baby, Brody did. <laughs> she don't know what yet, but she put out a little lookout for the, um, for Brody's whereabouts or whatever with the cops and all that stuff. And right when they were supposed to go on stage, right after Noah at the, um, you know, club opening or whatever, she gets a phone call and she was like, we got to go. We got to go. And Alice was like, bitch, what the fuck? We ain't going nowhere. So Simone, of course, goes with her and they go down to the morgue and come to find out. She finds out that Brody was dead and he got killed by electrocution. And, you know, they come back and they was about to get ready to perform. And right when the music comes on, Fro uh, Star freezes up and she tells her little man to take me out of here. And so, you know, he in a studio trying to give her a little strip show or whatever to make her laugh and all this shit. He, he's, he's, he's somewhat annoying though. Okay. Because he, he came up in there, um, when Star was working, talk about something, you working too much, you working too much. You don't need to be doing, bitch, shut the fuck up. Women be pregnant each and every day and they still do everything that they need to do that they've been doing prior to them being pregnant. Okay. Calm the fuck down. Okay. But you know, he just trying to be there for his baby, but it is what it is. Um, this whole Alex situation with that little bitch, I knew from the jump. Alex, baby, whoever told you you need to kind of fuck down with this um girl, I know you feel survivor's guilt and you feel guilt, period, because that girl died and you didn't. But uh, what you're doing, you're putting your life in danger and you're being taken for a fool, okay? Because how do you even know that that girl is really um Bianca's sister, okay? She didn't call Bianca's sister, you know, Olivia, down there, pulls her up in a G-Wagon. And this is how I knew. This is how I knew that Olivia wasn't shit. Bitch, my sister died. I'm here because my sister died, bitch. Yes, I could be a little starstruck, but I ain't finna be like, oh my God, oh my God, I can't believe I'm here. And you pick me up in a G-Wagon. Oh my God. No, bitch. No, bitch. Okay. I'm gonna be like, oh my God, wow. Thank you so much for reaching out. This is so great. Bianca would have loved this. You know, she was really a big fan. She ain't mentioned shit about her sister right then and there. She was so, uh, I said, uh-uh, uh, she ain't got the right reaction for me. This ain't happening, okay? Something, 
Some and Alex, your guilt ass, you know, just went right past that shit. Okay. And so when she was sitting down there showing her around and all that stuff, um, next thing you know, she um <clears throat> started telling her about Bianca and how it all happened and you know how her mama can't sleep and uh, how she used to do this with Bianca and all this stuff. She was like, girl, I couldn't sleep either because, you know, she pulled her out. They pulled me out before her. So you mean to tell me that my sister is dead because of you? I said, first of all, first of all, Alex ain't do shit. She ain't caused the fucking plane crash. That's one. Secondly, she told the motherfuckers to take her out first, okay? So this ain't on her, all right? They just so happened to take her out because she got the bigger name. That's what it was, which was fucked up, but that's not her fault. So you could calm that shit down and then she fucking leaks. I said, you ungrateful little bitch. I get it, but girl, you's an ungrateful little bitch. And then gonna call her back down there to where she's staying at. And when she comes in the room, you just so happy to have the song on that you sing all of a sudden I'll, uh, Olivia is a singer she was like girl that's you singing she was like yeah you know Bianca I, as soon we used to sing a lot together but it's like I just got into it more after she died or whatever I said you conveniently forgot to, um to mention that you also sang oh oh okay I see the game and I see the arrow and I see the angle that you trying to play bitch okay you can play her but you ain't playing me okay Olivia it's not finna go down over here not if I can fucking help it bitch so she bring her along to karma okay and you know Derek comes over there she got her shoe first of all they was in the back and she was like oh my god I can't believe that I am back here with take three <laughs> I said, girl, are they really that big? <laughs> That's, are they really that big? Have they even put out a debut, debut album? You know, not just the EP, but a debut album. Okay, I mean, if you say so. And so, she was like, when they go to the little VIP section, Derek Poe, um, bring his ass up there. She was like, this is Derek. And then she said, oh my God, did you see the way that she hugged him? She hugged him too familiar like she was trying to flirt with him. And it was just too seductive like. And I said... Alex, you don't see this shit? Alex kind of saw it and was like, and she stepped out of it for a second. And then when the music came on, she was like, oh my God, this is my song. And she goes over there to Alex and she's, I said, so y'all comfortable like that now, huh? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Okay. And then she gets, she was like, I just wanted to give you something that was like a Bianca and it was a picture frame. Uh, bejeweled picture frame that she did and it had picture of Bianca. I said you could have pulled that off the internet. You could have pulled that off her of Facebook or whatever, but you know, I'm just, I'm, I don't know if that's really Olivia's, Olivia really her sister. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. The bitch is suspect all the way around. And when they went back to the house and all this shit, Alex put that picture frame on that thing. I said, bitch, you don't see that red dot beeping in that goddamn mirror. Bitch, let me just tell you this. If this shit goes a whole nother episode and Alex don't see that dot in the fucking mirror, in the fucking mirror, I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm like, Alex, you was one dumb bitch. Okay? <laughs> but anyway, that was star. Y'all tell me what y'all think gonna happen. Y'all think Cassie really gonna kill Andy? <laughs> You, what y'all think that um Olivia who do you really think Olivia is Bianca's sister and what the fuck do you think she got up her sleep okay tell me all about that and I will see you guys later Carlotta finna hit Carlotta finna be they got Carlotta walking down the middle of the fucking street with a goddamn Hennessy bottle or, or Jack Daniels bottles in her hand bitch I said you know what <laughs> I'll see y'all next week peace and one more thing before I get off here I know I said peace but I'm gonna come back Rusty, aka Noah's daddy, and Bruce know each other. I said, oh, okay.